Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to go through step one and the different parts of step one as they go. And my general philosophy, as I've mentioned before in the previous videos, is to start and focus on the soul and physical training before the spirit training, because the spirit schooling is really the highest level. So it goes physical, soul, spirit from the bottom up. And I do think that's the best way to work on magic, to go from the bottom up because you're building a foundation. And so with step one, I would suggest going to the physical first, then the soul, and then the spirit schooling. And um, another thing that I've mentioned that's worth repeating is that going up the steps with Bardonian work and initiation into Hermetics is a triangle. So the lower steps are actually the base and it's a broad base. And the focus narrows as you go through the steps, even though there's a lot of writing in later steps, the focus is very narrowed and there's a lot of repetition that's mentioned in the early steps. So it is the foundation. I would say the first three steps are kind of really the foundation of it all, but step one especially is laying out all the key things. And so I'd like to address though what I've heard from clients, what I've seen in forums, which is a lot of getting very stuck on the thought discipline, the thought control, and the vacancy of mind. And my general advice is, if you are extremely stuck on it, to go to the soul and physical first, physical then soul, and then come back to the spirit schooling. Um, but I will also want to add, though, when you do come back to the spirit schooling, to get vacancy of mind, there are ways to do that that have to do with other traditions and things Barden says later in the work. And one is emptiness and learning to recognize emptiness. As, taught by Buddhists and Taoists mainly, that nothing is inherent or permanent. Everything is ultimately empty. Um, science has told us most of matter is empty space. And so everything is empty. And if you can come to recognize emptiness as a thing in itself, it will help get you into vacancy of mind very quickly. And the other thing that can get you into vacancy of mind very quickly, and Barden mentions this later in the work, is the concept of the great here now. Just being here now in the present moment, in the present location, and seeing that it's the great here now. It's not just being here now to calm the mind. It's just being here now will calm the mind. I mean. I think Ram Das was the one who had a book, Be Here Now, that will stop the rushing thoughts the more one can get present in the now. Eckhart Tolle also wrote a book, The Power of Now, which is very helpful with, you know, um, all of Bardonian work. Actually, I would say Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now is a great companion to use along with initiation into hermetics. But the great here now is also basically uh, a thing in itself because we see how as we go into the here and now, we see how it is so vast and contains all and all of infinity space, you know, and all of eternity time, you know, here now is the timeless and spaceless. And that is the great here now. It goes on forever in both the directions of time and space. And it, that will continue to be something that can connect you to the Akasha and the higher levels 
which makes all of this work easier if you're in a resting state of mind going through it. It will make all of the work easier. And it may even lead you to not necessarily want to do some parts of Barden that don't really seem inherent because going along with divine providence is basically key. You, you know, I, 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 well, I'll speak for myself. I personally don't want to do things outside of the will of divine providence. You know, Barden is ethical. And I, you know, I see divine providence and the way to connect to it as the great here now. And I really don't want to go outside of that. You know, I don't want to uh, create an elementary to, you know, work on various planes to get, get me more money, you know, or, or something, or, you know, like get me power, you know, oh, I don't really want power over people. All these training exercises are great in Barden, but, um, they're not always necessary to employ in day-to-day -day life. You know, it can, just be part of one's own work. So, okay, so I've spoken a little bit too much maybe about um, the spirit schooling when my original point was to go with the soul and the physical. And if you, uh, oh, I'll just go to soul. As you go through the soul schooling in step one, we're dealing with the astral plane. And the soul is the psyche. So we're dealing with the psyche of, um, you know, ourselves. And psychology is great for that. Yes, do the astral mirror. Yes, identify your negative traits and positive traits with the elements. That's key. It's really all about balancing the elements correctly, ultimately. That's, that's the work of the uh, magic mirror we start creating. But a lot of us may want to explore other work too outside of Barden, such as trauma work. I mean, we all have trauma. We've all been traumatized. And especially in some of the uncertain times we live in, um, all around the world really, definitely here in the USA, um, there is a collective trauma. There was a collective trauma with COVID and all the adjustments that seem to be being made, you know. And so dealing with trauma is important. And, you know, it's for that reason that on the Franz Barden podcast, I basically did psychology episodes you know, in the early episodes, not even touching the magical work. And, um, you know, my guest on the podcast, Philip Harris Smith, was especially taken by that because that basically resonated with him in what he thought was important for magical work. So the astral mirror is about mental health for sure. And it's also the key is identifying traits and identifying aspects of yourself with the different elements and beginning the work of balancing the elements in oneself and experiencing them, not just, you know, knowing what you're doing intellectually, but being able to experience the elements in your body on a day-to-day -day basis where you're aware of the different discordances that may happen. You may have a particular day where you feel very high on fire and low on water and being able to feel that going on and maybe to do some quick breathing in and out of the right element that you're lacking and or neutralize with air or whatever one needs to do to balance the elements on a day-to-day -day basis. But for me, it was important to get to a point where I could actually feel the elements in my body. It wasn't a concept, it was an experience. And so that's basically what I have to say about the soul mirror. Now in the physical training, you know, I'd say the key piece that's introduced is actually, you know, the mystery of breathing, because that's going to become central 
uh, or at least it was central for me going through the steps, um, you know, working with breath and going on to the conscious poor breathing, going on to breathing in and out the elements, the breath was in getting in touch with my own breath was extremely important. And as far as the impregnation of water, the conscious intake of nourishment, that's going to be the same wish that we continue to wish for as we go on into auto-suggestion and the secret of the subconscious. So make sure the, the, the wish is kind of in line with divine providence as much as you think, you know, I would make it something ethical. Um, you know, the, the, the most uh, help I feel like I've heard from people that they've gotten with their wish was simply magical success with this process of going through Barden. And, um, you know, to, to be totally transparent, that's always been my wish. I've never really changed it because the work continues. I mean, this is a lifetime path, you know. I see Bardonian work as a lifetime path. I don't see it's like, okay, you conquer it, done, good to go. You know, <laughs> like, I see it as a lifetime path, uh, a lifetime's worth of work. And it's a great path to be on. It will provide all the components necessary for a complete life, in my opinion, as I kind of said in the video the best manual for life so um in future bardonian work as well as you go on to the second and third books in the volume um it's a great it's a great path to follow this lifetime and very nourishing very fun at times very exciting and uh energizing and i feel like that's absolutely great now with the cold shower, sure, some people get hung up on that. Don't don't get too hung up on that, in my opinion, because um, you know there's an editorial note there. Depending on one's health, a cold shower may not be the right thing. It may shock the immune system and be a little bit too much. And I, I feel like that's completely understandable if 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 you don't need to take a cold shower. I'd say the brushing of skin, I, I think that's absolutely great, you know. I mean, if you get a special brush, great. If you don't, use something that works to open the pores day to day. I feel like that's fantastic. And I also have, uh, you know, think that things like if you have access to a gym, you know, going to things like a sauna or a whirlpool, or a steam room are great to open the pores and get everything flowing. Um, you know, spirit, soul, and physical, I, I feel like, can really get flowing in the sauna. So the sauna has been a big use to me and a big help to me. And it kind of sounds like, I, you know, I don't know if you don't have access or don't have the funds to join a gym, that's fine. And excuse me here, my dog's walking in the background. But um, hey, you know, no human is perfect. No dogs are perfect. Um, so anyways, um, that's a whole lot on step one for now. I'll definitely revisit different parts of it and revisit... Um, you know, the different aspects, because this is the foundation, and it's going to be added on to. It's going to be just built to be more and more, you know. It's using these same basic tools in more and more ways as we go through the book. So, um, here we are at the beginning, and this is more than just the beginning. This is the foundation of the entire work. So the more thoroughly one gets used to the practices in step one, it's gonna help with every future step. Remember, it's a triangle going up the steps. It's not like a rectangle where each step is equal. You know, the early steps are the base of the triangle. So 
Um, that's a lot. I've said a whole lot. Um, and uh, again, thanks for watching. Many blessings to you all during these uncertain times. And um, thank you for your support. And if you are interested in getting coaching from me, sure, please email me at thegraveyardcowboy at gmail.com. Uh, if not, no worries. And I also have the Franz Barden podcast. So um, great to be here on this day. And it's Monday here in the USA. And uh, wishing you all the best.